It's the start of a new era. While waiting for the art to establish, I'm going to revisit my previous landscapes and see if there's anything I should be doing about them. In order to get a better idea of how the landscape looks now, I will need to remove all of the extra pots that I've inserted between the gaps. One of the things I've noticed is that this afterglow is leaning heavily towards its side and upon closer inspection it looks like its stem has already grown quite long and it might need a bit of resetting. I've also been noticing that my poor barbillion is starting to bend and fall over and if you look down below the stem is already quite long, so it looks like it needs some resetting. So like the afterglow, this will be decommissioned for a while until the roots grow and I'll be setting it back in this spot. And while I like seeing imbricatas in clumps, I think in this spot there's not enough space for them to be clumping. So what I'll do is to remove all of the pops that I see on my imbricatas. I've always wanted to redo the Agavoides cluster over here. Some of them are duplicates if you look close enough. And for one, I would definitely want to insert the Romeo somewhere prominent. Looking at my bumpy Echeverias, the Pompus, Etna, and Bumps are all getting big. And it looks like they're really enjoying the summer sun. Hopefully they continue on this trajectory and by the end of summer they would be really huge. The Lawi is being overwhelmed by the Cotyledon so I might have to remove a few branches of it. The violet queens surrounding the balls here are already growing lots of offsets. I should harvest them soon so I can finish the lining that I've started before and by doing so I would be able to complete the design of this pot. I might also have to look into chopping off some of the blue chalk sticks here because they are starting to creep out further. So what I'll do is to clean up this area, remove the chalk sticks at the edge, remove some of the white pig's ear near the aeoniums. That way this, this area would be purely aeoniums. And speaking of aeoniums, I'm thinking of redoing this whole area. I'd like to keep the, the starburst in the middle because it grows huge. The green ones right here seem out of place, so I'll be removing both of them. I'll be filling that area with more of the short blacks once I get to propagate them more. Unfortunately, the aeoniums grow during the colder months, so I might have to wait until after summer before I start working on these. There's another imbricata here that's starting to succumb to rot. Although maybe not completely, but at least on this side, as you can see, the leaves are falling off. So far, I've only treated it with some antifungal spray, but I might have to pull it out and remove it. So I'll just shift over some of the plants here. They're starting to bunch up together. The afterglow at the top of this bowl is doing really well now. And if you would remember a few months back, I believe I had an episode about this showing that I had to replant and remount it because it was not getting enough water and it looks like since then it has already settled and has established even more it's even growing in size and around the base of this bowl you would see a huge clump of an assortment of ground cover I think I'm going to leave this mess as is because it's giving me great growth and I, I get to harvest a lot of plants from them. So I'll just let them carry on and do what they're doing right now. As far as spacing is concerned, I don't see much issues over at this side.
except maybe for this clump because the black princes are being covered by the sedums and some of the grapto sedums were left so maybe I might have to spend some time to remount them and put them higher, set them higher so that they would be receiving the sunlight that they need and at the same time they would be visible among the forest of sea dooms. Having said that, I'm pretty happy with how the sea dooms have grown in this spot and this is exactly what I was going for. I just didn't expect them to grow taller than the Black Prince. The sea doom adolfi around this PVN are now finally starting to recover. A few ones over at this side are getting more healthy now but those ones over there are still a bit dry so I might have to inspect them and see what I need to do to, keep, to bring them back to health. This Aeonium Orbicum stalk has finally finished flowering and as you can see it's now really dry. I think it's about time I pulled out the stem and threw it away. I don't think any offset would be growing at this point. We are still early on into summer and I see a few leggy echeverias in my collection so I guess it's a good time to chop them off now and since I have the shade cloth over them the heat would not be enough to fry them while they are still recovering on the ground. Over at this side, most of the echeverias are growing tall now but they aren't bending over yet so I might give it a bit of time before I even think about resetting them. The echeverias out here in the arc are now coloring up as I expected because they are now more exposed to the sun compared to back when they were in other parts of the garden so it looks like my color scheme is starting to show up having made a list of what I could do I think I should set these pots back I think I should set these pots back lest they become a trip hazard I don't want someone to fall on them it would be such a shame the plants over at the alcove are doing well some of them are even flowering when I'm done with the other parts of the garden, I'll be working on this area. I'm planning on using mostly sample vivums and other uh, low light plants here. So that includes the aloes, haworthias, and gasterias. And maybe if my mother-in-law doesn't mind, I could include some of her cacti over here. But it depends. Maybe at most, I could just create a small shelf for her. So right now, she has them all over the place, some in boxes and others in trays. But maybe she might be overprotective of this, so she might not agree to putting them out in the alcove. So as you can see, the alcove is unprotected. It has no cover overhead. So it might be a bit harsh during the midday, one of the hottest part of the day. It would still receive direct rain. Normally I would counter with saying that some of my Semper Divums are on the ground and they're doing really well. But you know, it's her plants. <laughs> I can't compel her to do anything. But we'll see. I'm going to raise that suggestion and see if she's amenable to that. I like doing reviews periodically like this because it helps me realize that there have been improvements to my plants because it's different if you can see them day in day out you won't, you won't really notice the difference so I think it's a good idea to do regular signpost videos like this I'm not sure if doing it monthly would be too frequent but maybe during the growing season it might make sense so consider this my January update and I'll probably be doing another one for February. We, we could expect lots of changes for Echeverias, maybe not so much for Aeoniums. And maybe by the time we get to the colder months, you would expect me to push out update videos for Aeoniums. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to get more videos like these. And do check out my socials, that's Serious Capades at Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I didn't plan this to be an update video, but it turned out to be one. But it's always fine, it's all good. At least we know that there's some sort of progress. So until the next video, bye.